If you're a gun owner and keep an eye on the news, you're aware that anti-gun politicians nationwide non-stop push policies that restrict your rights. Those unconstitutional policies often become law in states with anti-gun majorities, like California, my home state New York, and Maryland. Those laws are then subject of lawsuits, which create headlines that generate buzz around the case. But usually we wait months, sometimes years, for an outcome. Why is that? Today, we'll be looking at why it takes lawsuits so long to be finalized and how to get involved with the suits that support your rights. Hey guys, I'm Tiffany and you're watching One in the Chamber, the show that helps you become a better pro-gun activist. Before we get into the video, make sure to like, subscribe, and share to help defeat YouTube's algorithm. To explain why lawsuits take so long, we'll first need to briefly go over the U.S. court system. The U.S. has a dual court system. What this means is that there are federal courts and state courts. Sometimes lawsuits about the same law can be tried at the same time. The Oregon ballot measure 114, which was the initiative to change firearm ownership and purchase requirements, is a great example of this dual court system. Gun owners of America sued in the state courts while other gun rights organizations sued federally. Because GOA was strategic about the lawsuit, choosing the state courts because Oregon has a right to bear arms in its state constitution and has conservative judges in rural areas, we were able to get a comprehensive temporary restraining order put on the law so it could not be enforced until the case is over. That case is currently still in court being litigated, although we expect a decision here shortly. For context, we got the temporary restraining order on December 8th, 2022. It's now October. So we've been in court for about 10 months and the case still isn't over. Cases in the federal system can take even longer. For example, the landmark case of Heller v. District of Columbia. This case was the first to decide whether the Second Amendment protects an individual right to keep and bear arms for self-defense. Prior to this decision, and somewhat still to this day, the anti-gun lobby maintained that the Second Amendment was a collective right, intended only for those in state militias. The verdict for the Heller case was decided on June 26, 2008, originally filed in February of 2003. It took five years for Heller to make it to the Supreme Court. A more recent landmark case, Bruin, took even longer. The actual case name is NYS RPA 2 to distinguish it from a previous 2020 case that was rendered moot after anti-gun activists changed New York's law in an attempt to avoid a Supreme Court verdict. The original case was filed suit in 2013 and a verdict on the case was finally given on June of 2022 after nine long years of litigation. Sometimes cases start in one court and then lose and then continue via spiritual successor via another lawsuit in a different court. For example, GOA filed suit against the Trump administration in 2019 in reference to his unconstitutional order that enabled the ATF to ban bump stocks. In 2022, we appealed to the Supreme Court. This is also sometimes called writ certiari. While the Supreme Court declined to hear the case, a near identical case, Cargill v. Garland, one in the Fifth Circuit, creating what's known as a circuit split. Because of the split, it's more compelling for the Supreme Court to take up the case. While we still don't have an outcome or word if the Supreme Court will do that, it's worth noting that these cases have been in some form of litigation since March of 2019 when the ATF's bump stock rule went into effect. So why did these cases take so long to litigate? Well, the answer is that the court system is slow. The rules of procedure and the many options given to both parties during litigation have delays built into them. An example of this is even after filing a case, the plaintiff has 120 days to serve the lawsuit to the other party. Then the other side has a few weeks to prepare a response. And this is just the beginning of the suit. When you factor in time for motions during the pretrial period and the fact that most courts have dockets that are full for several months at a time, Getting a trial can also take a substantial amount of time as well. And finally, once the trial is over, the case itself often is just the beginning. For example, if a decision is made at the district court level, it's often appealed to the circuit court level. And this just occurred recently in California, where Judge Roger Benitez struck down California's high-capacity magazine ban, saying the ban was arbitrary and capricious. 
honestly based. California, of course, will appeal to the Ninth Circuit, where the real fight begins to overturn the magazine ban. States like California don't give up easily, but judging by the visceral reaction from Governor Gavin Newsom, the writing is on the wall with this one thanks to Bruin. So with all that said, what can you do to help? Well, there's a few different things. Number one, lawsuits are expensive. Gun Owners of America and our sister organization, Gun Owners Foundation, are engaged in a ton of lawsuits nationwide to protect the Second Amendment. We rely on donations from regular people like yourself to keep these tyrants in court. Secondly, in court, we use the experience and testimony of our members as evidence. This means that it's important not just to be a member of GOA, but to participate in things like notice and comment periods, which we covered at length in my last episode. And finally, maybe most importantly, get active in your community. Talk to your friends, talk to your family about firearms, bring them to the range to experience the joys of gun ownership for themselves. The more people who become gun owners, the more people have real grievances against tyrants in power attempting to take away their rights. To learn more about the lawsuits that GOA and Gun Owners Foundation currently are fighting and how you can get involved, visit gunowners.org. And by the way, we have a new podcast, State of the Second, with my friends Kaylee and John. Be sure to check that out. You can find it on our YouTube channel. Anyways, that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching and being a part of One in the Chamber. I'll see you next time.